Hello, and welcome to the Daily Dose of History. Today, we'll be looking at a great man who contributed so much to the African American community. His name is Roy Wilkins. He was born poor, but managed to attend integrated schools in St. Paul, Minnesota. He was accepted to the University of Minnesota and paid for college by writing in multiple newspapers, including the Minnesota Daily and the St. Paul Appeal. He first started to receive responsibility in the NAACP in 1931 as an assistant executive secretary. However, he had been a part of it since college and always seemed to have an eye for racial injustice in Maine, which landed him many jobs at the newspapers. He was instrumental in many NAACP activities, including but not limited to a picket march in Washington, D.C. However, he was arrested at the march in D.C. Despite this, he met his relations with Washington and spoke with many presidents and was also an advisor in the War Department during World War II. He helped represent the United States at the United Nations Conference in San Francisco during his time with the War Department. Later, in 1949, he had a very busy year, as he was named executing, Acting Executive Secretary of the NAACP and is Chairman of the National Emergency Civil Rights Mobilization. Both organizations sent lobbyists to Washington, D.C. for fair employment legislation and other civil rights. By 1955, Wilkins was the permanent executive secretary of the, of the NAACP. He led the NAACP through his exceptional writing and speaking skills, which he used extensively in Congress and with the presidents of his time. Wilkins was against violence in military movements, <coughs> and this led him to being a target for some extreme groups. Despite this, he was a recipient of many awards and the cause of many positive changes. Some of the awards he won were the Anti-Defamation League's American Democratic Legacy Award, Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award of the University of Minnesota, and his own NAACP Spin Garden Medal. As he grew older, many African Americans realized his contributions and appreciated him more. At age 76, Wilkins retires from the NAACP and was succeeded by Benjamin Hooks in 1977. Roy eventually passed away in 1981. Now, the broadcast will turn its attention to another historic moment for the African American community, the Little Rock Nine. Little Rock Nine is a story of nine African American high schoolers who fought against segregation in public schools. Three years after the monumental Supreme Court decision in Brown v. Board of Education, the nine students enrolled at Little Rock Central High School in Arkansas. The nine students were recruited by the NAACP to integrate the school. NAACP lawyers included Thurgood Marshall, who won back the students' right to attend the school and removed the governor's ability to stop them from going. However, it was not safe for the students to go to school on the first day of the year due to large mobs. On the second day, the students made an attempt to enter the school, but were stopped by white supremacists and the Arkansas State National Guard. Arkansas Governor Orville Farbos was against segregation and was openly defiant to the federal government. This defiance led to President Eisenhower bringing in the Airborne um, National Guard and federalizing the State National Guard. The students were finally able to attend the school for the year. Eight of the nine students finished the year. However, Minnie Jean Tricky was expelled before the year ended for fighting against racial discrimination. Ernest Green became the first African American to graduate from Central High School. Sadly, he the only one for a while due to the governor closing all public schools at the end of the year. The Supreme Court eventually forced Little Rock to reopen all its public high schools and begin to segregation immediately. Little Rock Nine helped expose America's racism on a national and international level. Thank you for your time. We'll catch you next time on the Daily Dose of History.